guys always talk about how many times Trump has lied. I've calculated that I think with your Chirons, with, you know, I don't know if there's any journalists left at CNN, but I know that, you know, if I were to estimate about 300 different, you know, distortions or misinformation that we get out of CNN, and you have to watch them in the airport, which is harsh, but if you added all that up to 46 months, it comes out to be 300,000 plus distortions of truth. You guys, this is how low you'll go, is that you went out and you made, you made lies and you, uh, you defamed a child. And then you had to settle out of court to pay this child for distorting information about this young individual. It's really just one of those things that is dividing our nation. And I don't believe in dividing our nation. It hurts our great nation. And so CNN is really the enemy of the truth, and that's my opinion. Willie's next in uh, Katy, Texas. Go ahead. Hello. Uh, good morning. Um, hey, Mr. Mr. Stelter. Just, uh, just a couple of questions. Uh, you know, your, your book is, is full of anonymous sources, as you say, uh, uh, yeah. that are inside Fox News. And, and how yeah. can they be reliable, which is the name of your show, Reliable Sources? Um, yeah. How can they be reliable for your reader if, if, if your book is full of, is so full of anonymous sources who you can't really track if that information is true? Um, yeah. How did CNN spiral down uh, to the absolute level of Trump hate that they are? I mean, you know, you got, you got anchors who are Who hates openly, Trump? Who hates hostile, Trump? I don't hate Trump. Openly, who do you think? Who do you think hates him? <laughs> oh my God, that was great! Everything that that man said is accurate, except for maybe I would wager that the number of lies told by CNN and the rest of the media is way higher than his count of three hundred thousand. I'm not sure what metric he used there, but I'm pretty sure it's a lot bigger number than that. You got to understand that CNN does a lot of lying by omission, and by that I mean they leave out key facts and data that are inconvenient to the narrative that they're pushing. They'll they'll have a story and they'll leave out key details of that story so that it doesn't hurt their political agenda. There's lots of very recent examples of this that I don't really want to talk about because if I do, the YouTube Matrix Sentinels will be sent after me and this video will be instantly demonetized. But I think you know what I'm talking about because I talk about it in just about every video. So trust me, if I ever get a chance to speak with Stelter, he's going to get an earful. Okay, so let's dig into Stelter's embolism-inducing response to this caller. I, I'm grateful for the call, and I know that you're not the old person that feels this way. There has been a process of radicalization that's happened in this country with media bashing that is absolutely unprecedented. <laughs> What? I mean, you see what he did there, right? He started off by sounding somewhat respectful and acknowledging the criticism that he just received, but then he pulls some flip-flop shit and accuses the caller of being radicalized by media bashing? Right, right, because the only people who would ever criticize the media are radicalized conservatives. What exactly makes them radical anyway? I haven't got a damn clue, and it's his viewers that are acting radical in Democrat-run cities across this country. Not only that, but what the hell does Brian Stelter do for a living? He is a media basher. Day in and day out, that's what he does. He bashes his ideological and business competition over at Fox News. And he doesn't just bash Fox News. He accuses them of radicalizing and brainwashing half the country. And in fact, the Washington Free Beacon recently did a study that showed the CNN media team covers conservative news outlets over 20 times more than liberal ones. As you can see, the terms right wing, far right, and conservative news or conservative media pops up considerably more than left-wing, far-left, or liberal news media. And when they do mention left-wing, it's typically in the context of criticizing the right. For example, the only mention of far-left in Brian Stelter's newsletter was a quote from April 1st on Sean Hannity in which the Fox News host referred to Red Code co-founder Kara Swisher as a quote, far-left media mob maniac. So you see, even when they do use left-wing, it's only to attack Fox news and the right. And what about media bashing? Brian Stelter has basically adopted the exact same rhetoric that Barack Obama used in his war on Fox News. That's why it's so ridiculous when Brian Stelter acts like criticism of the media is something that's never been seen before. The Obama White House is firing back. 
charging that Fox News is different from all other news. That Fox News often operates almost as either the research arm or the communications arm of the Republican Party. If media is operating basically as a talk radio format, then that's one thing. And if it's operating as a, uh, as a news outlet, then that's another. And the White House has gone beyond words. Last September 20th, the president went on every Sunday news show except Chris Wallace's show on Fox. And on Thursday, the Treasury Department tried to exclude Fox News from pool coverage of interviews with one of its key officials. Look, the media is not above criticism. They do plenty to earn it. And trust in the media has been plummeting for the last 20 years. It doesn't have anything to do with Trump. In fact, I'd argue that Trump is president because of it. I challenge anyone to get on any of the major network news sites or any of the cable news websites and find a single negative story about Joe Biden. Instead, what you're gonna find is lots of stories defending Joe against attacks and criticism. Is that the job of the free press to act as campaign PR for one of the parties? Listen, when Brian Stelter calls you a radical for questioning the media's honesty, it means you're over the right target. 20, 30 years ago, conservatives talked about media bias, and there were some really valid points to that critique. Uh, it is absolutely true that lots of journalists are based in New York and Washington. They're based in big cities. They have liberal leanings. And ma mainstream newsrooms are, are built to make sure that that bias doesn't seep into the news coverage. And yet sometimes it does. I, I absolutely acknowledge that. I think it's different to talk about uh, things as if they're enemies. No American is an enemy of another American. No news outlet is an enemy of America. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Some of us still remember when the Democrats and the media demonized the Tea Party protests and really any opposition to Barack Obama in the worst possible terms, even comparing them at times to domestic terrorists and suicide bombers. These people are crazy. There's 8 to 15 to perhaps 20 members of the Tea Party influenced wing of the Republican Party in the House who are crazy. They are crazy. Yeah, these are people that don't believe in evolution or global warming, so why are they going to believe that default would hurt anything? I mean, you're not dealing with, like, rational people here. I mean, like, come on. They've strapped uh, explosives to the Capitol, and they think they are immune from it. These Tea Party guys are, like, strapped with dynamite, standing in the middle of Times Square at rush hour, and saying either you do it my way or we're going to blow you up, ourselves up, and the whole country up with us. Or how about Democrats telling the American people that Republicans want them to die? Come on now, Brian. You guys have been painting your political opposition as the enemy for a very long time. It's one of the things that motivated me to do what I do today. Now, instead of calling us racists and terrorists, which you still do, now you're also calling us Russian traitors who support an existential threat. Trump's odd behavior with Vladimir Putin is compelling so many people to ask, what does Putin have on Trump? Has Trump been compromised? Trump might have committed treason. Then on top of that, you paint Fox News as a propaganda machine that's radicalizing conservatives. I mean, how much more can you demonize us? Now, what I find real interesting is that Stelter acknowledges that the media is filled with left-wingers and Democrats and can be biased, but somehow criticizing that is radical. They say that the best lies have an element of truth to them, and I think that's what we're seeing here with Stelter's attempts to deny. All right, that's all I can take of Stelter for right now, but if you're on Twitter, I implore you to tweet this video to him. I'd love Love to get his response to some questions if you enjoyed this video please hit that like button share and subscribe i upload content pretty regularly and if you would like to support this channel you can do so by using one of the platforms that are listed in the description or the pinned comment thanks for watching keep coming back